Hello and welcome to Sunday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> and he pulled his pants three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you beat your pants. Okay, What's okay, up with that? Okay, 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 here we go. This is the absolute. This is my bed, not with me. <laughs> no jokes. I can't look at Teddy for tough. I'll tell you the story afterwards. Hello and welcome to Sunday Night Live. Say, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Hello and what? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I am gonna pee my pants. <laughs> 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 okay, on, on. I'm Brent. I'm Oval. And today we're joined. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I didn't pee in our bed. Okay. <laughs> we got that on camera. Okay, but mm. a little bit of pee coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's clear. Okay, here we go. Ba. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> starting to come out of my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. We're gonna get better at this. Hello and welcome to Sunday Night Live. I'm Brent. I'm Oval. And today we're joined together with Aiden. Hello. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna pee my pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Sunday Night Live. I'm Brent. I'm Oval. And today we're joined together with Aiden. Welcome Hello. Aiden. Hi, good to Aiden. be here. So you've heard it been said that you should not speak about religion or politics when you're at a bride. Don't do it. People say it's it's not polite to speak about either religion or politics, but we decided on Sunday Night Live today we are going to be speaking about both religion and politics. What? That's what? how wild we are. Crazy. That's cool. We've got no fear. No. Oh. So usually we speak about religion, yeah, so that's, that's nothing one. new. It's good. But today, and in our uh, Good Question show today, we're actually going to be asking the question, are miracles compatible with science? It's going to be a real Who good knows? question. Yeah. Good. Good. But before we get there, let's speak about some politics, because we're wild and we don't care. What's happening in the world of politics, Aiden? Kanye West. No, politics. Politics, not, not, not entertainment, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kanye West. Entertainment? Politics. Politics. Yes. Entertainment. Presidents, you know, yeah. politicians, Political. lying Funny to people. Funny that you should mention <laughs> presidents, because in the field of politics, Kanye West has announced that he might possibly run for president of the United States in the Are year 2021. Serious. Well, serious. But he's got something there, now because if you think about why it... I Lee put that picture, that picture in there. there. But that makes sense because yeah. if you think about it, politics and entertainment is kind of like the same kind thing, of the isn't same it? Thing. <laughs> if you think about so it, think about just it. Just quickly imagine so. your favorite Keeping Up with the Kardashians. But this is like episode. serious, this is in the news. For okay. real, in the news. He okay. already did an interview with Forbes, all of that. So just Who's quickly Forbes? imagine someone, mm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Just imagine your favorite episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians because mm. I know there are some closet fans out there in the world, mm -hmm. myself included. Not me. So just imagine your favorite Keeping Up with the Kardashians episode, but in the White House. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Crazy. That's pretty cool. I mean, that, yeah. Okay, that is quite interesting. But but who backs him? I mean, obviously the politicians, especially in America, they, yeah. well, he's got enough money, I yes. suppose, but he needs other backing. Are there actually people that are willing to back his yes. run for president? So surprisingly enough, his biggest financial backing, if he were to run for president, is get this, it's someone, we've spoken about him on Sunday Night Live, actually, mm -hmm. uh, actually a South African. Zander. Not Zander. Oh, okay. He's a South African. He's Elon like, Musk <laughs> actually announced. Elon Musk. Elon, Elon Musk, Musk announced that he will back oh. Kanye West if he That's were to run cool. for president. Yeah. How crazy is that? Sure. Uh, imagine that conversation between Elon Musk and uh, Kanye, and Kanye West. West. Yeah. And then Elon Musk goes to Kanye and says, Kanye, run for president. Yeah. Because he's South African. <laughs> yeah. Kanye. Yeah. Kanye and then, then uh, uh, Kanye West was probably like, I must. I must do this. <laughs> I must do, I must I must do, do this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what, I kim you not. What? I kim you, you not. You not. Yeah, you yeah, not. Yeah, okay. Get in my Kardashian and Sorry. let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay, but Kanye West, I actually like him because he became a Christian. Mm. Um, and now, okay, True. but anyways, but yeah. what are his policies? I mean, all of them have got like certain policies. Yeah. Or, or, so what? all former, you know, and current presidents, they believe in like, you know, specific policies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the most interesting policy that Kanye West actually announced that if he were to become president, is he would treat America, you know, the United States, the same way that Wakanda was treated in the Black Panther. Wakanda, like 
Yeah. Wakanda. Like Wakanda yeah. forever. That Wakanda one. forever. Because he believes. That's one of those Marvin movies. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, yeah. he believes, much like Wakanda, the United States actually has access to a whole bunch of secret technology that's not being shared with the world. <laughs> and if he becomes president, he will, like yeah. the villain in Black Panther, open up all that technology mm. to the world. It's like the Tamagotchi. Imagine they just kept it to themselves. Like, we would never have that thing. <laughs> so yeah. you don't know. But this is like thing. actual policy. Actual policy. That's he, pretty cool. he spoke about it in, in the yeah. interview with Forbes something. <laughs> and he said that, you know, he will treat the White House, he'll treat mm. the technology in America much like Wakanda. Yeah. Open it up to the to rest the of the world. So, yeah. That's pretty cool. Candidate, what's your... What's your take on taxes? And then he's like, no, Wakanda. Wakanda, Wakanda. Yeah, yeah. It'll be his answer okay. for everything. He's also apparently not that sure about taxes. Did they ask him that question? They, they asked him in the interview, what, what does he think about taxes? And mm. he said, yeah, I'm not so sure. I still have to like, you know, do a, little bit, do a little bit of reading on, on taxes. taxes. I so want to be president. Become president. Does he pay his taxes though? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what would be, let me ask you this question. What would be the South African equivalent of Kanye West running for president? Because that's America, but let's bring it home. Black coffee. In South Africa, who would be that equivalent? Black, so Black coffee is not Steve that Steve Offmeyer. <laughs> Steve <laughs> Offmeyer, but he Steve could Wolfman. actually, he's, he's pretty political. But uh, I think it would be Kasper Nieuwe. Let's take it on a vote. That's a good one. Kasper, Kasper Nieuwe. That's a good one. Yeah. Or uh, that, that Sumizi guy. guy. Sumizi, yeah, yeah, Sumizi would be so funny yeah, to have yeah. president. Let's ask the viewers. I would watch it. Yeah, tell us, who do you think would be like a way out presidential candidate in South Africa. Mm. Not one Kurt that Baron. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Be. Sure. <laughs> Tell us in the comments <laughs> what you think. It's yeah. called Beside a Note. Let's, uh, okay. That would be a funny present. Now that you clued up with politics, let's Obviously. start speaking a little bit about religion. Yes. Mm. Let's go to the Good Question Show. Great. All right. Who's doing the countdown today? Oh, we didn't speak okay. about that before. We didn't, before we started yeah, before shooting. We started, we didn't Let's just count well. down okay. in numbers together. Okay. You guys ready? We started at 10. Okay. 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 One, two, two three. Oh, no. One, Three. Okay. Six. Okay. Yeah. J yeah. J just go there. Now. Now. Go. Okay. That wasn't so good. Wow. God damn it. This is the good question show. Just tell me what I wanna know. The good question show. Hello and welcome to The Good Question Show. It's really great having you with us and today we have Zander with us. Welcome Zander. Thanks guys. And today we're speaking about miracles. Yes, miracles. Are miracles compatible with science? Uh, this is probably sure. a question that you've struggled with um, and we're going to be digging into that question today. But maybe to start us off, let me ask you this question at home. When I say the word miracle, what comes to mind for you? Uh, what is that picture that comes to mind? Is there maybe a story that comes to mind? Um, and I'm going to ask uh, our host, Zander, and then also Brent to tell us what comes to mind for you when I say the word miracle, and also what impact has that had in your faith? So I think when I, uh, when I think of the word miracle, it's definitely something out of the ordinary, defies the laws of nature, is unexpected, and, and is not the work of any human being. So I've had the privilege of witnessing a few miracles in my lifetime, one of which was back in 2011 or 12. A few of my friends and I went to Bethel Church in America. Ooh, they had Open cool. Heavens yeah. Conference, so the heaven was open, open over always. that church. <laughs> that's, a, that's a cool name for a conference, <laughs> Open Heavens Conference. Heavens conference. So, and at the yeah. conference, they asked at the end of one of the sessions for people to respond if they needed physical healing or um, wanted to ask God for a creative miracle. Few people went forward and one guy actually said he has um, a lot of teeth or tooth problems and they started praying for him and he opened his mouth during this prayer and I actually saw how a, a tooth came out of nowhere. It, sure. it was, <laughs> I almost fainted. Cool. It, was, it was really, really crazy. Um, another instance was back when I was leading a youth ministry in Paul, there was a guy who walked in the one evening with torn ligaments. We ended up praying for him that evening. He went to the doctor to actually get it checked out the next day. He had to wear the brace for six weeks and oh. the doctor actually told him, everything seems fine. He has no idea how it happened. They took the brace off and he was healed. Sure. But I think when I look back at those moments, the, the thing that was, was done there or the things that I almost um, mm. connect to it, 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 was, it was way beyond a blessing just for the individual. Mm. Um, all of the people there were blessed. And the thing that jumped up in my heart was the fact that 
that I was so convinced about the o- overwhelming love that God has mm. for his people and the thought that I was left with, if God loved that person so much to do it for them, mm. he loves me as sure. much as well and he will do it for me. So I think that uh, it was definitely what mm. was left in my heart. That's good. Mm. That's so cool. one, one of the stories that I have is um, uh, last year when I was to outreach and we got the privilege to go speak to the district attorney of the area, um, which was pretty cool, and go to their offices and kind of like open the day for them, pray for them, um, you know, read a bit of scripture. And it was actually a cool moment. And in the moment, God like kind of reveals to me to say, like, you know what, I want you to pray for healing. And I was like, oh, this is all going to be awkward. Um, and we were in a room, quietly, quite, you know, um, mm. tight in a room, about 20 people and about five from our team. And I started asking who needs healing and most of the guys raised their, hand, raised their hands and I was like, okay, here we go. And mm. there was an old man standing next to me and um, his, his feet yeah, were like of, really sort sore. of hope no one put their hand up and, yeah, and you were obedient <laughs> yeah. and everyone's like, yes. It's easy. <laughs> okay. And um, so we started laying hands on them and we prayed for them and right after we prayed for them, guess mm. what? Nothing happened. <laughs> and it was kind of discouraging. I've and had we those experiences. <laughs> yeah. no and, it, and it sucked. And I was like, what now? And God just asked me again, do you trust me? And, and so we prayed again. But this time I told them not that we're not going to lay hands on them, that they're actually going to put their hands on the places where they hurt themselves. Mm. Because it's not me that brings the healing. It is God mm. that does it. It's the Holy Spirit that heals them. Mm. And so we prayed again. And right after that, people experienced healing. Um, the guy that's foot was really like he was walking on a crutch, left his crutch. He could walk properly mm. again with zero pain. And I, that is, again, just explaining that thing of like there's no explanation for it to be healed in that moment. Sure. Um, that is a go, going against, you mm. know, the laws of, sci- of science or laws yes, of yeah. nature. And I, that was just really cool. But the greatest experience of that morning wasn't the healing. It was the fact that that mm. person fell more in love with Christ. That's and I good. think that is That's the beautiful good. thing when I think about healing. Healing and miracles should always lead to falling more in love with God. That makes sense. We see that in the book of Acts, um, that whenever there is a, a miracle or healing or something mm. taking place, it's usually followed by salvation or it's for salvation or, or someone, you know, uh, or it's for worship. Uh, you know, so there's, it's sort of a means to an end. Yeah. Um, and I think sometimes the a misunderstanding of miracles is uh, are we, when it becomes the party trick. Yeah. yeah. So we want to. So we become so hungry for miracles in church, or we become miracle chasers in a sense. Um, and it's all about that instead of actually about God. Um, and that's one of the ways in which He can actually draw us closer to Him. And, it becomes um, more about the man of God than the Son of God. That's, that's what true, happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we see that. And unfortunately, some people, I think, have given a bad reputation to Christians mm. where, where church isn't about Christ. It's about the miracle worker mm. that works in that church or something like that. Definitely. Yeah. And I think, I must say, I think maybe as a viewer, um, you hear these stories from Brent and Zander and think that's amazing. But you haven't seen, you know, a man's tooth grow in his mouth or blind person seeing and I, I'm, unfortunately I'm one of those people now I'm hoping I won't lose my job as a pastor for <laughs> confessing that um, but I, have, we'll I haven't seen uh, a miracle like that and, and I trust that it, uh, that it can happen it's not, it's not a um, I 100% believe in it but at the same time I believe that I've seen miracles in my own life um, and it's the miracle of salvation um, uh, Luke chapter 5, Jesus uh, heals a paralytic. So a man comes, he can't walk. And then he says, which is easier to say to this man, your sins are forgiven or to say, rise and walk. Mm. And then he you know, helps the people to do both. And he tells them his sins are forgiven. And later on, he says, okay, well, just to help you, tells the man, rise and walk. And the man starts walking. Mm. And Jesus is making the point that there is a greater miracle than walking if you are lame. Um, and that is the miracle of salvation. Um, and I've experienced this in my life is that if you speak to people that knew me before I started walking closely with Jesus, I was a different man. Um, there was a physical change. Last week, my cousin shared his testimony on um, the show. Um, and like I, I know that guy before he started walking with Jesus. There's a miracle. I, I remember my roommate in hospital, many other friends in hospital. And mm. even today, I see people coming into church Christ getting a hold of them and they are different. There is a miracle. You yeah. cannot explain that um, in any logical way. God yeah. did something and I think that's important that when it comes to miracles is that miracles is never the main thing. Yeah. It's sometimes a means to an end and the greatest miracle is actually 
God himself or, you know, coming to salvation and getting to know him. It, it makes me think of what Jesus said, that we will see greater miracles than he has done, like raising the dead, which makes mm. me think that he was almost hinting at, it, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's greater to see someone um, get up from being spiritually mm. dead mm. than necessarily from getting up from being physically um, dead. But maybe, sure. maybe yeah. we should take the conversation a bit into the almost the spect- spectrum that we find mm. inside of church where you get the the supernaturalist if i can call it that way these are the people that if you just mm. take out a tissue to blow your nose they are there laying hands on you <laughs> yeah. and praying for so healing was it the miracle chasers exactly yeah. like storm chasers that's a great yeah. series we should, yeah. Yeah. We we should get make that. a show discovery yeah. we ask you know, <laughs> please yeah. make us a series so yeah. you get, almost get this one yeah. side of the spectrum where everything should be a miracle there's a yeah. miracle um behind every bush which is amazing we need those yes. people in church but then on the other side of the spectrum Spectrum, you get a group of people who um, Skeptics, almost yeah. never expect a miracle to happen, almost yeah. uh, mm. bordering on skepticism, if I can put mm. it like mm. that, which is also not necessarily entirely wrong when you look at the, the two opposites. I think both of them have, have pros and cons. And I think just yeah. the, between the three of us, we find ourselves at different places in the spectrum. Yeah, that makes um, sense. But it's, it's very interesting to see people almost gravitating towards these two extremes. Yeah. And what would you say, what is the danger so so if we were to take the spectrum of the supernatural uh, supernaturalist those who you know love miracle chases and then the supernaturalist quite uh, natural. everything is about cool natural um and and just the, what we can explain and see in this world on that spectrum you know for christians where would you say is the dangerous uh, say for instance the, the miracle chaser like yeah. what would the dangers be there I think if you look at the miracle chaser and the, like the supernaturalist, yeah. is that it, it would be a, a, a way of looking at it to say, you know, let's say I'm sick and I say, mm. you know what, I've got, I've got the flu or I've got a, a sickness mm. and I, I just decide, you know what, I never go to the hospital. I just pray and God will heal me. Sure. And the, the problem with that is, is that I'm, not say, I'm saying that, you know, the natural part of our lives, mm. the natural space of our, of our world that something God, like science and, and medicine science and medicine yeah, yeah. is that God doesn't have his hand in that sure. is that he only yeah. has his hand in the spiritual in realm the supernatural in yeah. the supernatural yeah. realm and I think that is that is something that is way, mm. that is a major problem because now we're mm. saying it's either or yes, um, and yeah. that is an That's issue good. because it's, it's also not a wise way to approach it I yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for it, that side of the spectrum getting in your car driving to the doctor is abandoning your faith that yes, means yeah, that yeah. equals you do not have faith which is yeah. not not the yeah. truth. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's sort of saying that the the um yeah, that, that's a, God only works when it's supernatural yeah. and if it's not supernatural God doesn't work. And I think the the problem is exactly what you say is to say that God doesn't have his hand in natural processes yes. also and 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 medicine came about because of an understanding of how nature is yeah. put together, how our bodies are put together. And because of that understanding of mm-hmm. nature, we get to a place where we discover medicine, uh, etc. Oh, and I think that the problem there is that um, it is denying the fact that God created the world and he created mm-hmm. it good. Yeah. Um, Genesis 1 explains that to us, is that that this creation, this world, the the laws of nature in which we function, they are created by our God Mm -hmm. and they were said to be good by Him. So they are not the enemy. The the doctor and everything in nature and even science, that is not the enemy. God also has His hand in In that. uh, Because otherwise our faith can only get stirred when something supernatural happens. But my faith gets stirred even in the natural things when the sun rises and it's beautiful I see the hand of God in that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just quickly a point on the, the sun rising. The sun rising. Uh, you've heard this being said. When someone says, well, every time the sun rises, it's a miracle. Yeah, it's usually right? like that picture on Instagram of the sun rising over yeah. the sea. Everything, it's, Very it's a miracle. Mm. But just a, on just a technical note, that is not a miracle. A, a miracle is when the laws of nature is defied. When, yeah. when, when uh, something happens outside, like you said earlier, is when it's not normal. Um, but when the sun rises, it's normal, but it is still glorious. It's, yeah. still, it's still God glorifying. It's still amazing, mm. but it's not a miracle. Because many years ago, God said, uh, he spoke creation into being. And part of that system that God created was for the sun to rise. Mm. And thousands of years later, still doing it's still happening. Still it's still obedient God. to the voice of God, yeah. mm. which That's is amazing. Awesome. But it's not a miracle. Yeah. Um, a miracle. It's the way God Absolutely. created. So God is present in the natural and the supernatural. And the supernatural, and the supernatural. yeah. I think the danger maybe often with the the super 
naturalist the other side, point of yeah. view, the other side of the yeah. spectrum, is that miracles are impossible. Um, if okay. there can be no scientific logical explanation for yeah. why something happened, it, it has to be untrue, which is almost um, unscientific. Because if I make a conclusion before studying something, that really doesn't make sense. Science is that I observe sure. and make conclusions. Yeah. And I think um, that oftentimes when, when the, the supernaturalist reads the Bible even and what happened in the Bible, they, they, if they can't define it or put a scientific definition yes. or explanation to it, then they go over into, okay, then maybe it is... It has to be symbolic in some sort of way, which which many of it um, yeah. might actually be, but but it almost borders on miracles or or impossible. There's no way for it to to have any merit mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, yeah. So that happens when you, um, yeah. When for instance, if you've, and I think this happens to to most Christians because we grow up in a world where we are told that the only way of knowing something is if it can be proven scientifically. Mm -hmm. Um, but that is actually, you know, very limiting because then we are saying that reality is only in the confinements of what we can yeah. prove scientifically yeah. and that there's no reality outside of that. But when you make that statement, you can't prove that statement scientifically. Yeah. So it is a philosophical statement. It's not a scientific statement, sure. actually. It's self-defeating. Mm. Um, and so the problem is when you say there is no reality outside of the natural, mm. um, that is actually the problem. And exactly what you say, the way that you s can then... Uh, some people do that. They, they've got TV shows about that where... They explain some of the miracles by scientific means, saying, well, it could have been this that actually happened. Um, and if we can't have that explanation, we think, well, then it must have been symbolic. symbolic yeah. But the problem, so what we're actually then saying, the danger of that side is that if you think miracles are impossible, mm. then unfortunately you cannot be a Christian. Yeah, you can't receive salvation. Um, yeah, because that's also a miracle. So, so I think, the, the, just back on our question, are miracles compatible with science? No, they're not. Mm. Unfortunately, not. Uh, because if you say miracles are not possible, then Jesus could not have rose from the dead because yeah. that is impossible. Scientifically, Jesus cannot rise from the dead, mm. but he did. Um, and scientifically, a virgin cannot give birth. But our faith is based on those statements. Yeah. So, so if you do not have space for the possibility that God mm. can go beyond what is possible, mm. Um, they, then we have no, no resurrection, no Christianity, unfortunately. And yeah. for me, I like to think about it this way, is that um, we don't have to pretend that scientifically it's possible for a man to walk on water. Mm. You can't. Mm. You can't walk on water. It's impossible. But did I've Jesus... Tried. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest, we've yeah, all yeah. tried it. At yeah, the yeah. swimming pool, yeah. Yeah. you've tried yeah. it. But did but, Jesus uh, walk on water? Yes. yes, definitely. Because Jesus can do what is impossible. He can, he can override his own his laws own of laws. nature. Yes. Yes. Um, and it has and to be impossible. said that although uh, miracles and science cannot be reconciled, it doesn't mean that faith or religion and yes. science, is, science yeah. is irreconcilable if there is even such a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But we'll get into that yeah. probably in the weeks to come. Yeah, the weeks to come, yeah. But I mean, miracles and science, if they're not compatible, doesn't mean that science is bad or the yes, enemy. Not it just means that yeah. it's not the end of reality. There are Absolutely, certain things that yeah. can happen outside of that also, which yeah. God can do, which yeah. is quite amazing. Yeah. Where would you guys place yourself on the spectrum? Sure, that's, that's a, a good, good question. question. Maybe, uh, maybe I think it'll be good if we all go and explain that, but maybe just a question to you also as a viewer. Um, where would you, uh, Siri is speaking to me. <laughs> no, Siri, down. Yeah, um, so where would you put yourself on the spectrum of the supernaturalist and the super? naturalist. Mm -hmm. um, I think for me, I think the area of growth for me is definitely from the one from the left to the right, like from the supernaturalist toward the supernatural. So I think in my personal um, faith journey and my wife and I, we've spoken about this is that we definitely want to trust God more uh, for the supernatural. Uh, we want to see, you know, God w doing the impossible um, in a greater way. Definitely. We want to grow in that direction. Uh, definitely. Yeah, I think for myself, it's exactly the same. Mm. Um, moving more from the kind of looking naturally at things mm. to more to supernatural. And not just that, but actually we compartmentalize these things so easily. I mean, if you go on an outreach, um, you're yeah. ex extremely mm. supernatural. Then, you you're know? the man of God. You're yeah. the man of God. You, you <laughs> pray for people to get healed yeah. and that. But when mm. your mom is sick at home or your you know, kids or your yeah. friend, you're just like, oh, let's take you to the doctor. Let's, a here's call, a panado yeah. for your mm. headache. And it's actually to ask yourself the question, am I looking at my entire life and, and, and actually mm. allowing God to be more mm. supernatural, looking for the supernatural yeah. things in my life and allowing God to bring the miracles mm. 
in every single step of life. Yes, yeah. And that is the challenge for me. I definitely want to work yeah. into that. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe just before you say yours, I, I, I do think that sometimes when we pray, because I've seen this, how God actually, how the hand of God works you know, in my life or in people's lives, but mm. he, he does it in natural means. Mm. Yes. So he doesn't do it in a supernatural way, but he, yeah. he's still, it, it, like it just feels like God is actually orchestrating. Yeah. And it's like maybe financial provision. Mm. You know, um, you see God coming through for you, but obviously you can explain how it happened. Like, you know, yeah. you got that job and, and this happened, this came happened. through for you and that yeah. came through for you. But at the same time, you're sitting there thinking, you know that you've prayed for this for how long yes. and you saw how the doors were busy opening. opening. So it's also God working in that. Yeah. But I think what we're also saying is we want to see also more, more of God working in the supernatural way. Yeah. Also, yeah. I found myself uh, very close to the ends of both spectrums where uh, for a long time, I've step one was praying. If that didn't work, I go to the doctor. <laughs> yeah. And then at yeah. other times, I've been at a place where I go to the doctor first. If that doesn't work, then I pray. Um, whereas I think I, I still lean more towards the super naturalist but my wife she she definitely reminds me let's let's pray both ways sure, good wife, going good. to the doctor yeah. or or staying at home pray mm. apply that's your good. faith that's a good one very good yeah. No, very cool. So yeah, I think if we can just leave you with an encouragement, I, I believe that this is for all of us and for most Christians out there is, is the, the problem with this is that maybe the reason that we're not trusting God more in the supernatural or more for miracles is because our faith still needs to stir in that. And mm. it, it actually is not trusting, you know, just in natural things, but trusting God for miracles. Um, I'm just reminded of um, Ephesians 3 that says, um, Now to him who is able to do far more and far beyond all that we ask, according to the power at work within us. And I'm wondering um, if the reason why we're not maybe seeing miracles around us, because first we're not trusting God and we're not asking God for that. The, the great thing about God is He's the one that controls everything, the natural yeah. and the supernatural. Mm. And the moment that we can look to Him and ask Him, I really do believe that He's going to do more than what we can think yes. or even ask. Yeah. Um, and that would be a challenge to you is to allow God to speak into your life more and allow Him mm. um, to, to allow Him to you know, ask the things mm. that you want to ask. Um, and I do believe that God is going to intervene in that space, either in the natural or the supernatural, because that's who God is. Um, he loves us and He wants us to be in relationship with Him. That's great. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed your time uh, with us. We've enjoyed chatting about this, most certainly. It's I've really learned some new things, and I'm challenged also to mm. trust God for, for new uh, ways of working, actually, um, in our lives. Mm. Um, and then uh, next week, we're going to stay on this topic of science for a little bit longer. So we're going to be looking at uh, science and the Bible, or science and religion. Are they compatible? And then also, we're going to be asking the question, was the Earth or the, was the universe created in six days? Uh, probably something you've uh, also asked yourself. Uh, so we'll see you again next week. Have a great week. Boom fast. Hi everyone, I'm Tamara and I've been asked to share my testimony this week on Sunday Night Live. So on the 1st of April 2018, I got baptized with my dad. Um, it was no joke. And that exact same month, I went to my first church camp where I experienced the Lord speaking to me um, about what I should study one day, which he was busy telling me it's theology, but my faith was still very weak back then. So I wasn't sure whether it was my own thoughts running wild or actually the Lord speaking to me. But after that, he spoke to me through dreams. People were speaking into my life, busy giving me confirmation as well. Um, well, it was the Lord giving me confirmation through people. Um, and then yeah, at that time I was also serving in fusion. Um, so after I matriculated, I decided to take a gap year because I still wasn't sure what to study. Um, but I obviously didn't want to stop serving in the church. So I got offered an internship at the church. Um, and then, yeah, so this year I've just been interning here at the church, busy doing all the small things that no one else has time to do. And just working in the church environment, um, I really formed a love for it. And I feel like also during lockdown, the Lord really took me by the ears and he was like, Tamara, now you're going to listen to me. Um, you have to study theology because obviously I was not sure. And it was a very overwhelming feeling because um, it wasn't anything new. I received word from him already in 2018, but I feel like I really came to the realization in my own heart. Like I accepted it as well, that it is theology. Um, so yeah, when I got asked to share this testimony um, for Sunday Night Live and I heard that the theme was uh, miracles, I thought to myself, miracles is such a big concept. Like, what am I going to share? And then I thought to myself that miracles are wondrous or 
um, amazing occasions that have happened in your life. And what may seem very small to someone else is very big to me in terms of the Lord giving me confirmation on what I need to study, which will determine what I do for the rest of my life because I wanted to do something that uplifts the kingdom of God. So I really hope that you can really pinpoint the miracles that the Lord has done in your life um, because He is a miracle worker. Thank you for that testimony. And we're going to go to Aidan Lee with How to Church and they're speaking about fusion today. Fusion, yes. But you know what's still like bothering me? Yeah. It's this whole Kanye West thing, like him running for president. That um, is quite interesting. It is interesting. And I think I'm, I'm worried about Trump at the moment because I'm... He, I'm thinking, I wonder if he's worried. I think, I think he might be a bit worried, you know, mm. um, because he comes from the entertainment world and the business world and so does mm. Kanye. But I think Trump is probably like singing in his head the whole time. He take my country <laughs> when I'm impeached. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, that really, I think, I think that's actually a, a thing. So. Brain's quite clever. Mm. Yeah. yeah, longer poppy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to our church. I think it's a cloud on to Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we've spoken about babies, we've spoken about kids, but what about teenagers in church? Let's talk about that. Leg shot! Leg shot! Leg shot! from the bottom and then you just Why? Welcome to this week's episode of How to Church. This is Brent, and as you can see, I have finally hit puberty. So Brent, speaking about puberty, let's talk about teenagers. Brent leads our fusion ministry, which is all about teenagers. So Brent, please tell us more about fusion. Yeah, so Fusion is our teenage ministry at Doxadeo and uh, we work with teenagers between the age of uh, 14 and 18 years old and what we want to do is disciple them and lead them closer to God and how we do this is very easy and very practical um, is we have gatherings during the week before COVID-19 and we had these kind of gatherings of a Sunday morning and where we would gather together as well as community groups during the week but because of the hashtag COVID crisis that happened um, we had to change the Things around so for now um, we are actually launching this Wednesday happening um, our first online presence on Instagram where we're going to be having a discussion between one or two people and we'll be answering questions live right on the Instagram live That's cool. um, so I hope we're ready for some good questions yes and then after that um, we're actually going to be joining our evening service in this next time um, you know, putting some youth into the evening service, making it fun and um, keeping it vibey. So we're definitely going to be doing that. And yeah, that's the, the, what we're doing in this next season. But not only that, um, we really have an intentional ministry. We want, we want to connect with every single teenager. That's so we have a group of leaders that love teenagers, that care for them. And uh, we're going to definitely be doing one-on-ones. Um, we're doing it right now. And we're inviting you, if you want to have a conversation with one of the leaders, we would love to just have a good conversation with you and hear where you that's really cool. So obviously knowing about what fusion is, next question, why should any teenager in South Africa in the year 2020 even consider going to fusion? Why? That is a really good question. Amy. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. <laughs> ah, anyways, but it's a good question and it's, it's a good question to ask. Like myself, I went to youth ministries growing up. Um, I never met God in my youth time. I met him in my first year, but there were so many good practical and good principle things put into my life in that stage. And I think it is extremely crucial. Why? Because mm. I know we spoke about kids last week. We did. And kids is kind of like looking at this way of planting a tree. You kind of plant a seed and it starts giving this little sprout. Um, it's starts putting the, the, the main foundation, the main things into your life, cool. which is really great. But this is what happens when you hit teenager age. Mm -hmm. And when you hit between the age of 14 and 18, you start uh, making your worldview or shaping your worldview. That is true. And when that happens, you start choosing in which direction you want to start growing. Kind of like those little trees you'd buy, mm -hmm. and just when you buy them from the, green, uh, from the nursery and you want to plant them. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, you always see when you people plant them, they put a little stick next to it. I've always wondered about that. What's Why do that they about? do that? Huh? They think there's going to be another tree that grows out of the stick. Maybe. You don't know. But they put a little stick next to it to kind of guide the tree Very to grow cool. into the right direction. And that's what we want to do at Fusion. Now, we don't want to tell you how to think about God, but we want to mm. show you of who God is. And we want to show you and help you discover God in your own right, in your own way, in your own journey, <clears> to find your purpose in that. And so we believe we want to guide people in the right direction. Mm 
of growing in the knowledge of God, of knowing God, loving people and impacting our world. I think it's actually so significant what Brent just shared because there are some crazy statistics out there about so many and I mean literally billions of Jesus followers mm. who actually meet Jesus when they are a teenager. Yeah. Like there's, they speak about there's this window while growing up where you start forming you know, your worldview, you start forming your own opinions about things which happens when you are a teenager mm. and so many people actually end up meeting Jesus during that life stage. So if you're a teenager don't miss out on Fusion. If you're a parent who has a teenager, start sending your teenager to Fusion. Mm. If you're anyone who knows a teenager, start sending them to Fusion because they will most likely, no, they will definitely end up following Jesus better, knowing Him more. Do it. Do it. Do so it. thanks for joining me today, Brent. Let's go back to Sunday Night Live. So there you have it. That was How to Church. And uh, right now we're going to Tumi, the announcement guy. I realized my mic wasn't on. <laughs> <laughs> Why, hello there. I'm Tumi, your announcement guy. And if you just finished matric and want to take a gap year to figure some things out, in the Doxadare family, there's a program called Metamorpho. It's a place where you can find the purpose and calling over your life. And if you want more information, reach us and we'll connect you with the right people for that thing. And if you want to help this family give, there are three ways you can do it. There's Payfast, Zappa and EFT. And if you want to join this family, because we believe you're amazing and you believe we're amazing, and we just want to put those two together and be amazing together. And I want you guys to remember to like, share and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. It's to me, your announcement guy, and I'll be seeing you next week. Cheers, cheers. Good day, Doxadeo family. If you're between the age of 18 and 23, or you might know somebody between the ages of 18 and 23, this video is for you.